Coming up, showing the one you love that you want to have a steak dinner on Valentine's. Heart-shaped ribeyes, fire it up. From the birthplace of American barbecue, three-time state champion Jack Wade, we're here with my girlfriend, Michael McDermott. We're gonna talk a little bit about beef. I tell you, Jack, I thank you for having me, but you didn't have to have all the ambiance and the lighting and uh, everything. It's, it's all, all romantic. It's all worthwhile, what the heck. Hey, uh, great TV this week, uh, the show that takes about a beer to drink, so let's go ahead and open up the libations and get right into the show. Definitely. There you go, I get to do Bill's job. Uh, <laughs> I could never do this the right way, we'll give it a try. Nothing. <laughs> oh well, so it goes. So uh, what do we got going on here, Michael? Well, right now we've got beautiful beer rolling over my lips, but uh, as far as the steaks, we've taken two ribeyes, and if you notice, it's in a nice romantic shape. We've got a heart going on. Now what I've done is I've actually taught the two-time and reigning world champs how to cook steak, and what I want to do is share that same technique. So before we get too far into the technique, tell us about the ribeye and what we're going to be looking for. Wonderful. When you're at the meat counter, what you want to look for is marbling. And everybody knows that marbling has that white fat going through the steak. What you want to look for is the soft white fat. That soft white fat on the grill will render out and give you all that great flavor and tender juiciness too. Now when you want to test that at the counter, you take, and it's wrapped in cellophane, you run your finger across that cellophane, and if it feels like speed bumps, you see where it's moving on that meat right I there? See that, yeah. That's actually hard white fat. Now that won't render out on the grill. Oh. So what you're looking for is all this beautiful soft white fat. And what we have here is a certified Angus beef, so a cab ribeye. So that's certified Angus is a grade? Certified Angus. Angus is a type of cow, and that keeps a lot of fat and marbling in and a great flavor as well. So what I'm looking for, is there is there grades that go along? Am I looking, I know there's like select or anything like that. What am I Absolutely. looking for? Absolutely. You're looking at three different levels, which will be a uh, select, choice, and then you'll go into prime. And what my specialty is, is what I'm going to share today is how to take a choice steak and wind up with what you get at a prime steakhouse. Sounds great. Let's get to it. Great. So what we've got here, very simply, great red beef. You're, you're looking for no graying or anything. You've got terrific color. And um, when you have a steak, you want to season it a little bit. Now you want to season just with simple salt and pepper. It's going to bring out the flavor, going to add some depth with the black pepper. Salt will get those taste buds going, but you don't want to do too much. Just so I don't little. need to get out all those fancy steak rub, barbecue rub things. Salt and pepper is an easy, simple way, huh? Well, you know what? You, you talked about meat selection, and let's talk a little bit about why we chose ribeye. Ribeye has so much great flavor in there. Now beef has a lot of flavor in the different cuts, but the different cuts do have distinct notes. Filet mignon has a different flavor than a ribeye, mm -hmm. and a New York strip or Kansas City strip is different than a ribeye as well. Right. But this has so much flavor and fat, this is really a celebration steak. Oh. When you're having a special occasion ribeye, it just makes your mouth water, and you definitely want to make her look at you in a special light, so that's why you want to bring out your best. I get that. All right. So wonderful. we got a little bit of salt on there? A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and that's, you know, you hear it all the time. Salt, pepper it, and cook it well. That's all you need to do. So cook it well, you mean cook it like to a temperature of well? Cook, cook it good. Cook it good. Oh, you cook it good. I got it. Um, what I want to do though, is I actually want to cook to a medium rare. That's going to be our goal today. And I've got four simple steps to get there that'll get everybody cooking fantastic steaks at home. What's step one? Step one, preheat your grill 325. That's going to be medium heat on most grills. Now when you do that, that's going to, everybody says, oh, you got to sear it in, you got to sear, you got to high heat, high heat. You don't have to do that because when you sear, you're actually destroying the outer shell of cell structure oh, and like taking it. that moisture out. Well, you want to keep all that moisture in so it's tender, juicy, and velvety in your mouth, right? Right. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to cook on medium heat. And it doesn't matter whether you're inside the house or whether you're out on the grill, that's what you want to do because it's all heats and eats. So tip one, um, a grill has different uh, temperatures on it. It doesn't have high and off. Mm -hmm. Put it on medium heat. Absolutely. And when you're, you're uh, cooking on medium heat, you're going to caramelize the sugars and the proteins. So the second step is actually place the steak for five to seven minutes on the first side. Okay. Not hard. Leave it be. You want to close the top, let that convection do all the work, and the heat wrap its love around that steak. Okay. Now when you're caramelizing the sugars, you're not looking for blackened grill marks. What you're looking for is actual caramel. 
hmm, actually sweet candy. So you're making meat candy, basically. And those grill marks will be one set is what I recommend. Don't get too caught up into making the, the, the check mark thing yeah. and all the rest. That's all steakhouse Let's stuff. Let's get huh? fantastic grill marks one time. And then when we pre uh, present it, it'll look beautiful. And you'll get that sweet flavor rather than the burned flavor of trying to sear two sets of grill marks. On. Okay, so we got step one. We put it, we, we season it, choose it well, put the grill on medium, high heat medium heat 325 is and where we're going to put it on the grill for five to seven minutes that's five step to seven two. minutes absolutely okay. third step flip it and cook to an internal temperature today in south carolina it's going to be a little different temperature than it would be in the summer because we're uh, coming up on valentine's day well yes we are so the grill cooks a little differently and takes a different amount of time so when you cook to an internal temperature and I recommend going to 140 degrees. 140 degrees internal. What is that a medium rare you said, right? Well, you know, when you get into what you call a medium or medium rare, that's just words. When you get into numbers, oh. that's when you're actually getting specific. I see. So we need to get us a good grill thermometer too, or you a know, good meat thermometer. A good is. grill thermometer or meat thermometer that reads internal temps would be fantastic. I recommend a digital one. You can find them from $15 on up. Yeah. I recommend looking for a, a thin tipped because it'll be a quicker read. Okay. And if you're looking, you ain't cooking. We've all heard that, That's right? That's the truth. So when you've got that lid open, you don't want to spend much time waiting for your uh, reading to come up. Okay. So I go for an internal temperature of 140, and then I remove it from the heat, and don't stack it on top of each other. Set it out separate, and let it rest. Now, just after a long work day, we come home, we prop up our feet, and we want to relax, right? True. We've worked that meat on that grill, and all those juices have rushed to the center. We want to actually re let it relax and rest, mm, relax. and then all those juices oh, come out into the outer can, can we give our steak a beer while we're at it? <laughs> All right, I'm ready to go. Now, so we got step one, mm -hmm. we're going to medium high heat. Mm -hmm. Step two, we're going to cook it on the grill five to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Step three, we're going to cook to an internal temperature. Yes. And step four, let it rest. Let it rest. Well, that all sounds great to me. Are we seasoned up and ready to go? You want to go to the grill? Well, them? we've got one side seasoned, but we've got to season both sides. Oh, we're going to, yeah. We're going to taste both sides, aren't we? Yep, we sure are. You know, as it rolls over your tongue, you sit there wanting to have a flavor experience with each chew of that right. bite. That's what we go after in the competition world as well. So we've got those ready. We're ready to go to the grill, Jack. Well, let's get it on. Thank you for getting that. And what I do is I simply place it right like that, angled, and leave it be. Let's shut that down so we can actually uh, let that convection work. Okay. And we'll go five to seven minutes. Good idea. Hey, while we're waiting for the uh, five to seven minutes go by, maybe we can take a look at a couple of great plates. This is a uh, first one here is from David Somerville, a little Saturday afternoon chicken from barbecue rubs, dry rubs.com. Look at that, Michael. That's a gorgeous spatchcock. Man, I'll tell you what, that is beautiful. He's got it just sitting on that grill. I'm, I'm telling you, that's probably going to be a super moist, tasty chicken. I wouldn't Oops. doubt. Hey, we love to see the great plates. Make sure you send them in to us. Get on the website uh, to the submit button. Easy to do quick and simple and we always like to see them on a facebook page hey we're out like 2005 or 2006 visitors right now or likes in the, on the uh, facebook page certainly uh if you need to uh talk to us i'm jack at great tv.com um you can always go to bill at great tv.com and hey you can even get to michael if you want to he's yeah. michael mcdearman at probably michael mcdearman.com where, where does how do we get a hold of you get fired up foods.com as well as michael mcdearman on facebook <clears throat> michael mcdearman on facebook get fired up foods hey uh I think our five to seven minutes has passed. It looks like it. Let's go ahead and get these things uh, turned over. Sounds good. I use tongs, Jack, and I, on these steaks, you don't want to poke a lot of holes because you don't want to lose a lot of juice. So I just grab it with the tongs, simply flip it straight over, and then we want to let that convection continue to work. So we close that lid down and go to an internal temperature of 140 is what we're going to look 140. at. 140. Mm -hmm. Got it. What do you think? I think it's ready. Let's check. How will we know? We're going to check for that temperature, let's check our do digital it. read. Those digital read thermometers, let's see here. You want to push the point into the middle of the steak, and there it is, 140. Oh, look how tender it is. Oh. Woo, child. Want some tongs? You know what? I will grab those tongs. There was a reason why we brought tongs. Oh, look at that plate up right there. Mm -mm. Beautiful. Close this down. Let's set this out here so we let those rest. Now notice I didn't stack those steaks up. I'm going to let the, the air cool separately. 
so that they actually don't continue cooking. Cook through temperature, after you remove it from the grill, it'll continue to rise three to six degrees after you take it off the heat. Three to six, that's three a lot. Six. It is, so your ending temperature is gonna be 145 range. So if I wanted to arrange these on a plate, this kind of, I guess the fat kind of grabbed that and curled it up a little bit. How would I put that on the plate so it still looked like the heart? You know, ladies, they love seeing those hearts, don't they? Yes, they so, do. Well, all you'd have to do is simply cut right like that. Oh, look put at them that. together, and you can bring it together right like this. Do, do, do. Oh, oh, and come and make oh, the heart. look at that. Oh, and you've got to point down here, and your curve's over. Oh. You kind of get the idea that that would be the heart-shaped ribeye that you would like to serve on your Valentine's Day table. It looks it. You know, one thing to think of though, if you want to warm her heart, add a little cayenne pepper. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, and that, and uh, hey, a bottle of wine doesn't hurt, and uh, certainly uh, it's just about time to finish up these beers. It's always a pleasure to do great TV from the birthplace of American barbecue. I'm Jack Weibor. This is Michael McDermott. Buy local, think global. Stay sustainable and every chance you get, hug your mom.